All right. Hello, everyone. It is uh, 12 4 p.m. on Saturday, and uh, I believe y'all have an exam Monday. Uh, so I wanted to kind of sit back, maybe uh, go over a couple of topics from the test, see if y'all had any questions or anything to discuss about the topics for uh, the exam. Now, what I wanted to do in this first uh, uh, live stream is to go over chapters one and chapters two. Your exam is on chapters one, two, three, and four. Uh, so here we go. Um, and yeah, I'm smoking a cigarette, but I can do that because I'm at home. <laughs> so exam one, let's see what I've got right here to my side is, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, I'm gonna put y'all over here. And then I've got the study guide wrote out to the side over here that I can uh, glance at. Oops, okay. And then I've got my PowerPoint disposal as well. All right, maybe I might, hello, hello, hello. I might uh, get paused when I um, go to these other, uh, uh, the PowerPoints and stuff, but I want to double check that I'm giving y'all the correct answers and whatnot. I can't smoke a cigarette and do this at the same time. It makes me feel weird. <laughs> this is called front stage, kind of. Remember, we just went over dramaturgy, front stage and backstage. Well, this is kind of a mid stage, I guess you could say. But that's on chapter four, and we'll get to that uh, here in a minute. So let's see. First thing I want to look at is uh, your, let me pull you right, uh, your study guide. Okay. What I've got is we've got uh, society, uh, social location. So those two go together. And then we've got the scientific method. Positivism, social Darwinism, Protestant ethic, and the spirit of capitalism, uh, Marx and Weber, Marx economics, Weber religion. And remember, when you see Weber wrote out, it looks like Weber. Remember when I was back in the day in undergrad and I was going, hey, who's that dude about named Weber? What does he do? No, it is pronounced Weber. All right, Max Weber. All right, functionalism, conflict theory, ah, oh, all this fun stuff. Well, let's get started. All right, so uh, society is, uh, let's look straight at the PowerPoints. Group of people who share a culture and territory. Okay, did y'all get that or did it pause? I'm not sure. A group of people who share a culture and a territory. So remember, it has a, you know, territory as in an area that this uh, society is located. And it has a culture, which culture was chapter two, where uh, culture could include um, morals, values, belief systems, uh, clothing, um, uh, you know, all kinds of things, gestures, uh, you know, we got different gestures for different language, uh, different cultures. Um, so, and then the next one is social location. That's the part of society that you, my friends, are located in. Sorry, you're not my friends. You're my students. Um, your place in society is your social location. All right. For example, my job as an adjunct instructor, that's my social location. All right. It is the corner in life that people occupy because of their place in society. Okay. Uh, examples would be jobs, income, education, gender, race, age. So another example of my social location would be white. That's my race. Um, another uh, social location would be female or cisgender female, which uh, cisgender is not on the test, but that's a uh, part of the, um, uh, we'll study when we get to the gender chapter. Now, let's see if my, uh, I'm going to check on my my live stream and see if it's working right. Because, you know, my computer is 100 years old. 
Okay, we're still we're still going good. All right, now let me, let me minimize this. All right, so next on the study guide, uh, the scientific method. <laughs> All right, the scientific method is used in sociology, so that we let's see, so that let's see, blah 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 blah. Let me get down to this one. The scientific method is what, uh, here we are, okay. The scientific method is what makes sociology scientific. It's not just a bunch of he said, she said, my mama said, my papa said. No, it's actually scientific research. We use, uh, you know, it is an objective, systematic way of collecting data. You have to be objective without bias. It is systematic or scientifically collected. Remember the, the example of um, everybody likes to go people watching, right, at Walmart. So, you know, you're sitting out in your parking lot and, and you're watching people at Walmart and you're like, why are they wearing that or why are they buying that or why are they doing this? Now, that is kind of scientific, I mean, sociological research, but it's not scientific. All right. For it to be scientific, you have to come up with a hypothesis. You know, you have to do readings on, on past research that's been uh, produced. You have to have a sample versus the population. Or if you can get the population, it's very difficult. We'll use samples, uh, non-probability and probability samples. Um, you have to, uh, let's see, um, and take out your biases when looking at the world, you know, when looking at this, uh, you know, example of sitting in Walmart parking lot. Now, to using the scientific method, getting empirical data, you know, scientific data to study, uh, you couldn't just study one Walmart at, you know, between eight and five at Russellville. No, you need to study like 500 Walmarts, you know, with random times, because if we only study people between eight and five at the Russellville Walmart, we're going to miss out on the general population. You know, what about people that go to Walmart at 3 a.m. like I do because I don't want to see people. Right. Remember. All right. The scientific method. Let's see what's next on our agenda. We've got um, I'm going to just do a couple of more of these uh, positivism and social Darwinism. Okay. All right. I'm gonna double check that my video is working. Hello, hello, hello. Maybe it's working. Okay. And then let me do this one one more time. All right. So we got positivism. Uh, positivism. Uh, what's up? Oh, wait a minute. Is C.J. Collins? Oh, tap. Oh, tap. Is that who that is? I know your profile picture is like this big. Oh, tap. Oh, tap. I don't know. Uh, or either CJ Collins is the guy that sits in front of you. I don't know. I can't, I can't remember. Look, I got a whole bunch of students. I try to memorize y'all's names. It's hard. All right. But here we go. We're going to talk about positivism and social Darwinism. Okay. That's on your study guide. All right. So we got uh, positivism is uh, people that want to reform society. Okay, that's who's behind me. What's up, CJ? Uh, so you sit in front of O-Tip, O-Tip. That's his nickname. You sit in front of him. Uh, you, you were sick and you had an excuse. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, giving uh, feedback during class. You're a good student, and I appreciate that. Thank you, CJ. Or, well, I'm sorry. I call my students by the last name. Thank you, Collins. You have good feedback, and you keep keep on uh, going with your feedback in class. I appreciate it. All right. So, positivism. You want to reform society. You want to change laws and make things, you know, make life better for the population. Okay. Uh, remember, we had Compt, C O M T E. Uh, that old dude. He was all about positivism as in changing things for the better, reform society, all right? Then you've got 
social Darwinism. Now, social Darwinism is basically sitting back, letting society run its course, and just write about what we see. We're not going to change nothing. We're just going to report what we see. Okay? And they say in social Darwinism that, you know, the... Um, the people that don't need to be in society will eventually die out. That's not nice. It's not nice. But this is social Darwinism. This is what people think, okay? So, anywho, we got um, these two topics in sociology are still debated today. I mean, it's, it's been a long going debate. Should we, A, try to change society for the better, reform it, positivism? Or B, should we do social Darwinism and let uh, the less apt ones die out? Now, you know, my opinion, well, my opinion doesn't matter. It's not on the test. What is on the test is you need to know the difference between positivism, reform in society, social Darwinism, sitting back, letting society take its course, and let people, you know, die out that doesn't need to be uh in society. All right. Remember, we had the uh, PowerPoint slides of, of the pictures of them old folks. Yeah. Well, they dead now. They ain't even old. They just dead. <laughs> All right. What we got next? Uh, the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism. All right. So what it basically is saying is uh, the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism is that uh, long story short, based in religion, uh, you know, people were trying to figure out, you know, how am I going to get into heaven? I, I, need, I need a sign to know how am I going to get into heaven? So a sign came and they said, if we start to live frugally, save our money, reinvest that money to make more money, then we're going to get into heaven. All right. Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism. So that means live frugal, save your money, reinvest so you can make more money, and, you know, you'll get into heaven. Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism. There's a big old book, like, you know, this big, thick. I don't know if I ever read it. I'm kidding. I read it. Uh, it's not the funnest, but um, that, that's a book that you can read. Okay. What's next on here? Uh, oh, yeah. Marx and Weber. All right, Karl Marx, my man, Karl Marx. All right, Karl Marx is all about the conflict theory. Karl Marx, he looked at the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. Conflict theory. So Karl Marx looked at what? Conflict. Ha! All right, he looked at uh, the struggle over scarce resources. You know, he wanted to know why people argued and fought. Here's a, here's a little tip. All right. He said that in, in this, you know, makeshift fa factory that we have, you know, we're making this up. Well, not really, but all right. We got this factory and we got the owners, which are called. Anybody, anybody. The, the two social classes that Karl Marx had. He had one called the, that were the owners. And he had one called that were the workers. I know it's hard to spell. You ain't going to have to spell it on, on the test, but you are going to need to know it. Two social classes that Karl Marx had. Owners, bourgeoisie. Workers, proletariat. Okay. So we got the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. And they are, uh, I guess, against each other. Hey, you know what? The goal. Hello, mom. Joanne Foster, I'm doing a little uh, study, study guide, uh, going over the study guide just a little bit for some of my students. All right, so join in, Joanne Foster. Well, you know about sociology. She is uh, college educated, and uh, she, she's good to me. She might help grade my papers every now and then. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Hello. All right, so here we go. Here's our story. We got, we're got we talking about Karl Marx and the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. Okay, so Karl Marx, he said, you know, the goal of capitalism is profit. 
So these bourgeoisie, these owners of the corporations are trying to make the most money possible. So what do they do? They pay their workers, the proletariat, they pay their workers the least amount of possible so they can make, you know, more money. <laughs> you know, the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor. But anyway, Karl Marx said that now this was, you know, two million years ago. I'm kidding. Not really, but this was way back in the day. Karl Marx said that what he saw was instead of the proletariat getting together and rising above and fighting for, for equal pay, he saw that the bourgeoisie pitted the proletariat against each other, you know, and the proletariat would fight against each other, you know, based on race or social class or gender or whatever it is. And the proletariat kept fighting and the bourgeoisie is up there laughing like, ha ha, dance puppets, dance, right? Because he's making the money and the proletariat's fighting against each other. Well, Karl Marx said, how about the proletariat get together as one and go against the bourgeoisie and take over the bourgeoisie and, and demand equal pay. You know, has it happened? Sometimes unions or, you know, some people have done, but no, uh, Karl Marx said that it would be a bloody revolution and that uh, the, the workers, the proletariat were going to rise up and take over the bourgeoisie for equal pay. Has it happened? All right, let's see what's next on our study guide. Oh, so here we go. We talked about Karl Marx. So when he, when Karl Marx talked about social change, he thought about economics, okay? So when you see on the test something about, uh, you know, Karl Marx said that blank was the engine for social change, you know that it's economics, money, okay, power. Karl Marx was all about money. Keep that in mind. Now, Weber, on the other hand, he thought the engine for social change would be religion. Okay? So, keep those two in mind. Karl Marx, economics, Weber, religion. I think it's Weber. Let me double check. Yeah. All right. Um, functionalism. Okay? And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do function. Wait, let's see. Uh, from our study guide. I'm going to do functionalism, conflict theory, and yeah, and then I'll wrap it up. Okay. Functionalism is a type of theory. Now, what is a theory? A theory is a perspective that one can use to view society. Okay. You don't have to agree you don't have to disagree. You don't have to um, believe in it. It's just a different way of looking at the way the world works. Okay. So functionalism, for example, let's, uh, we'll put on our functionalist glasses and we're going to see the eyes through a functionalist. Okay. A functionalist does not like change. A functionalist likes things to be smooth sailing. Okay. The easiest way to remember what a functionalist does is to use the human body as an analogy. Okay. Just the way our heart and lungs work together in order for our body to function, so too do social institutions work together in order for society to function as a whole. So our social institutions, such as the law, the educational system, marital system, all these social institutions work together in order for society to function as a whole. It is, they say that society is made up of interrelated parts. Okay. That's functionalist perspective. They don't like change. They don't like chaos. They like things to go smooth sailing. They kind of like tradition. You know, they, they like things to be the same way as they usually have been. All right, now that's functionalism. And remember, the best way to remember it is use the body as an analogy. Social institutions work together. They are interrelated in order for society to function as a whole. All right, uh, conflict theory. That's my favorite. All right, 
When you see conflict theory, you better think conflict. Come on. It's pretty easy. All right. Conflict theory is looking at people. Oh, wait. Let's put our conflict theory glasses on because this is a different theory, a perspective, a way of looking at life. Conflict theorists look at what? Conflict. They look at the struggle over scarce resources. They look at uh, the differences between the haves and the haves nots. They look at the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. A lot about economics and power. Okay. A uh, conflict theorist would ask, who has the power? You know, who has the money? Those people are in charge. You see, conflict theory. They look over, you know, people who have scarce, uh, you know, the difference between the people fighting over scarce resources. Okay. All right. Well, it's been 20 minutes. That was your uh, first little, um, you know, piece of uh, learning about um, going over the study guide. I've only gone over a little bit of chapter one. Uh, I'll come back later on after I take me a little break and uh, we will continue with chapter one and then we will start on chapter two. Uh, if this is helping you, let me know. Uh, please, please give me questions. Uh, form questions. Um, you can email them to me. Send them on Facebook Messenger. I get notifications. Um, but I am going to check my snail mail or, or my ATU mail as well. But uh, relax. You're going to do great on the first exam. But remember, the first exam is the hardest. All right. Enjoy your afternoon. I'll be back. And uh, CJ Collins, oh, tip, oh, tip. <laughs> Tell your buddy that.